Hello heroes, Joe Smith here. Chances are this is probably the first you heard about this story and even greater chances that this uh, last time you'll hear about the story. We now know exactly what happened inside the Wayne County Jail that led to the death of Corporal Bryant Searcy. Good afternoon, I'm Glenda Lewis. And I'm Alan Campbell. Now we broke this story in a push alert this afternoon on WXYZ. Newly obtained documents detail Searcy's cries for help were not answered. Also, inmates as eyewitnesses and a failing video surveillance system. Could this have been prevented? 7 Action News reporter Jim Kurtzner joins us live from downtown Detroit with the explosive details. Jim. Yeah, Glenda, the documents show the inmate charged with murder planned this to try to escape. This happened here on September the 2nd. This is how the sheriff explained it the next day. I tell people all the time, that uh, we house some of the most dangerous criminals in America in Wayne County Jail. The investigation by Detroit Police Homicide spelling out a disturbing, deadly chain of events. Deputies are supposed to work with a partner during final lockdown checks. An inmate, DeAndre Williams, allegedly planned to attack Corporal Searcy to take his keys and escape. Another deputy, we are not naming, entered Ward 404 at 10 minutes after 10, but it was too late. He saw... Corporal Searcy lying face down beneath the table. That deputy pulled the duress alarm. Corporal Searcy was unresponsive. Inmates' hands were checked. The inmate in cell number one, DeAndre Williams, blood was observed under his fingernails. Inmates were interviewed by Detroit homicide detectives and are named in the report. One said he heard Corporal Searcy calling for help. We now know those were not heard and responded to. Another inmate told detectives DeAndre put an eraser in his cell door to prevent the locking mechanism from working. DeAndre jumped out of his cell and attacked Corporal Searcy by throwing him to the ground and choking him and was saying, go to sleep. He grabbed the keys. He ran toward the exit door. DeAndre heard the deputies coming, so he went back into his cell. He observed blood on DeAndre's shirt and on his face, started washing his hands, and clipped his fingernails. An inmate said DeAndre approached him earlier and asked weird questions like, what crossroads are we at? Another inmate told detectives Corporal Searcy was yelling for help but was losing the fight. The inmate then tied the deputy's hands with the deputy's headphones and took his keys. The report concludes the suspect's shirt with blood on it could not be located and it was possibly flushed in the suspect's toilet. We're going to have much more on this coming up next hour at 6, including what do the sheriffs and the deputies union president say about all of this now? Did the system, did this jail fail to protect this deputy, an 18-year veteran? We'll see you next hour. What? Well, there you go. Another uh, mostly peaceful protester, a jogger. It just happened to be jogging by in the prison. Um... Accidentally killed an unintended uh, victim. Uh, what? What the fuck? You know what, Joe Smith? You're talking about another black killed another black, just like 95% of them are in the last 60 years. It's all black on black. The only race, the only races against blacks are blacks. Blacks are racist against them to themselves. And it's getting to the point where they're racist against whites too. But yeah, happened uh, like two weeks ago. That's probably the first you heard about it. It's probably the last time you'll hear about it. Because it's just another typical black on black murder. It's not like the shock, you know, a white cop or defending himself against a, a shooting attack or a knife attack or machete attack. Uh, after running around five minutes trying to get away from the machete or knife wielding black felon, child molester, that they finally shot to save their lives. It's not like, oh... Black man naked, running around town naked on PCP. Claiming he's got the virus, the China virus, spitting 
and the cops, so they have to put a hood on him and restrain him to keep him from hurting himself. So the ambulance gets there, it's like, and then dies a week later. Well, the media's claiming that, oh, the white cops murdered him, the white cops sat on him. It's like, the white cops fucking sit on him for a week in the hospital? No. The guy died from acute PCP overdose, the autopsy said. Daniel Prude was that one. It's like, for every one white cop that kills a felon, a black felon, trying to defend himself, there's uh, like a thousand more black on black murders just like this one here. That's why you don't hear about these. Just another day in Detroit, another black on black killing. Just another day in Chicago, ten more black kids accidentally shot by blacks on a drive-by shooting. They're the unintended targets, but they happen to be the only ones in the street, so they shot them anyways. Just so they could shoot someone. Don't sound like we have a racist problem in America. It sounds like we have a black problem in America. Don't hear stories about whites right around killing blacks. Unless they're being shot at by the blacks at the time. Or attacked with a knife. And those blacks are high on PCP or drunk off their ass. Ain't ridiculous. One point in time, years ago, Joe Smith was friends with as many black people as white people. And we didn't care about what color we were. But Joe Smith's uh, tad brownish from his heritage. One of the guys in the gang was uh, Polynesian from Hawaii, so he had browner skin too. It just seems like the last ten years, uh, not all of them, maybe not even half of them, maybe not even 25% of them. Maybe 75, 80%, maybe 90% blacks in America are actually really good, upstanding uh, citizens, whatever it's called, with uh, jobs and educations and have never committed a crime in their life. But maybe it's just uh, racist news media that just is making sure that we hear about all the black on black murders but but they don't tell about the, all the the blacks that don't commit a crime and they don't mention all the white on white crimes or something. But but overall the statistics are last uh, like fifty to sixty years between ninety and ninety three ish, ninety four ish percent of blacks that were murdered were murdered by blacks. And that's one fact that you just can't get over. And those that were killed by white cops is like less than one percent. And most of those were felons trying to avoid arrest. And, and half of them were under the influence of something. And half had weapons that never attacked the cops. So 
Yeah, there's been a few where the cops just really fucked up, too, but... But y'all making it sound like the cops, that's... You know, Joe Smith ain't had his own issues with the local cops here in the past. A lot of the local cops here in the past have been uh, kind of scum of the nation. And uh, some are in prison now or dead. Some of them bad ones. But don't over exaggerate. Yeah, there's bad cops out there, but don't make it sound like all cops, all white cops are running around trying to rid the country of black people, because they ain't. And you're just creating more racism because of it. You're making more people, more white people, hate blacks with all this false narrative bullshit. Uh, yesterday, day before, or whenever, sometime last week, had a, and I'm probably going to do that in the next video talking about that, but, uh, two black teenagers, uh, a black girl about like 16 or 17, and a, a black 12 or 13 year old boy, uh, the, either one or both, the girl anyways, took a gun to a playground, shot and killed uh, another like 60 and 70 year old black girl. She's only being charged with second degree murder. Well, she took a gun to a playground. It's an underage juvenile child. When was the last time an uh, underage juvenile child took a gun to a playground and shot and killed someone? Like, uh, was it something like that happened in, like, Kenosha, Wisconsin recently? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, a white boy, Kyle Redhouse. He was charged with first-degree murder for first-degree premeditated murder. For It must be premeditated because he took the gun there with the intent to kill someone. Even though the, the people he intended to kill, apparently he, he killed while he's running from them and they're shooting at him and whacking him on the head with a skateboard and jumping and stomping his face into the ground while he lied on the pavement. And he still got first degree premeditated murder charge. Meanwhile, uh, a, a black kid, a black girl by the same age, takes a gun to a playground and shoots another. Uh, black kid or black girl. Oh, that's not premeditated. That's uh, just kind of happened during an argument type murder. Yeah, proof of systematic racism. Everyone's racist against whites, and the blacks perpetuate it. Even though the blacks are usually the murderers, Joe Smith signed out.